did not understand Nigerian language. I thought I would interpret it. That was what she just said. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, special. Okay. Put your hands together for my sister. She's not a special. Abound 
towards you. So that you always have all sufficiency in all things. So the grace of God not only abounds, the grace of God also makes a man to be sufficient. In other words, if you ask God, He's able to make you or any one of us to have everything we need. That is sufficient. All sufficient God. I love the Amplified Version. It says, Translation, say that under all circumstances, to make yourself sufficient, possessing enough to require no hate or support. Hallelujah. God can make you to be that all sufficient that you will need no help from any man. Repeat after me. Say, God is able, God is able to make me abound in grace and sufficient in everything I need. Our title today is All Sufficient God. Come on, give Jesus a round of applause. All Sufficient God. If He cannot do it, He will not have said so. Because he says so, he's committed to do it. And he will do it in your life. Amen. God is able. He will not only supply your needs, but he will supply how many of your needs? All. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. God will supply all of your needs according to Philippians 4.19. For God will supply all of my needs. Not some of it. All of my needs. Because an all sufficient God. Well, how? How? Can I ever be so sufficient that I will have everything I need? Have you ever seen a man that is so sufficient to have everything he ever needed in life? Has there been anyone that ever lived? That was so sufficient in everything. Can anyone ever be sufficient in this life? To be sufficient, brothers and sisters, is for you to have everything in life. Everything in life. If we are going to serve this goal, let's know the criteria of this goal. Let's know its qualification. He said, God is able to make you to be all sufficient. If he cannot do it, he will not have said he will do it. For God to say he will do it and he can do it, then God will do it. Amen. 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 Come on, give Jesus a round of applause. Give him a round of applause. He will do it. He will do it. Amen. Because he is able. He is a God of all sufficiency. No one can ever in this life have everything that he will ever need except God gives him. Through God, then you can have everything you need at every time. There's someone here today, someone out there listening and watching, who really want to know how, how can you become sufficient in all things? I need this thing desperately. I need that one desperately. I need this one desperately. And yet I'm hearing God that God is able to make me to be all sufficient. Lord, how? Do you want to know how? How can you be sufficient in all of it? Number one, ask God for grace. What did I say? Ask God for grace. You know, grace is important. Grace is that Thing that only God can give you that no man can give you. Grace is that thing that when God gives you is more than you need. Ask God for grace. Abundant grace will make you sufficient in everything you need. Say God and God is able to make all grace. Everybody say all grace. All grace. The grace you need now, the grace you have now, is just manageable to what you have now. For you to be upgraded, you need more grace. Hallelujah. Amen. And this God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Say, God, give me grace Amen. to abound. Amen. Give me abundant grace Amen. for abundance of you. 
sufficiency. Amen. Amen. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Except grace abound, you cannot be sufficient. Except grace abound, you cannot be sufficient in everything. Therefore, your sufficiency is a matter of grace. Your sufficiency is a matter of what? Grace. As grace increases, so is your sufficiency. Look at 2 Peter with me. Chapter 1, from verses 1 to 2. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. How many apostles do we have here today? For you to qualify to be an apostle, then you must have planted churches. But how many servants of God do we have here today? Uh -huh. You start from that one. Simon Peter, a servant. How many servants of God do we have here today? Hallelujah. And God will make you an apostle. Amen. You have to start from somewhere. That's the grace. You don't have to become an apostle. You start with a servant. And the grace will abound. Then you now want to do more for God and God will give you more grace. I said God will give you more grace. Amen. To them that have obtained, obtained the same kind of precious faith with us. Our faith is precious. That's how we make our boast in God. Whatever you are today, it's not by your power, it's by His grace. And whatever you are going to be tomorrow, it's not by your power, it's by His grace. So when you get there tomorrow, remember where you started from. Because if you don't remember where you began from, it will demote you. God will not demote you. Amen. But it demoted so, remember King Saul. Said, they that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me, I will likely. I will likely esteem. I will treat them as nothing. Look at verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied. Let's see that together. Grace and peace be Can you see that grace can be multiplied? Can you see that grace can be multiplied? Say, God, give me grace. Give me more grace. Give me abundant grace. For sufficiency. Hallelujah. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. Through the knowledge of God, in some translation it says that what true is in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace can be multiplied. It does not become sufficient unless grace is multiplied to you. So what I need to be promoted, what I need to abound, what I need to be sufficient, what I need to be all sufficient is what? Grace. May God abundantly bless you and give you grace. Amen. How can you become sufficient in life? Not only do you need God to multiply His grace on your life, number two, you need to spend time searching the knowledge of God and of Christ. Because it said grace is multiplied through what? The knowledge. So all the Bible study that you have been avoiding, you are cheating yourself of grace. All the Bible study, you need to be attending in the church. You keep praying that you missed And he said, grace does not come through prayer, does it? He said, grace comes through what? Knowledge. Say, I know something now. You know it. Say, you shall know the truth and the truth shall No, make it free. It's better to be made free than to be set free. When you are set free, it's just a temporary thing. But when you are made free, you become permanent. You can also make other people free because it's your making. Hallelujah! Amen. You see, that's why we need to know the Bible. We need to know the truth. So not only will God multiply His grace on your life for you to become sufficient, you need to spend time Searching for the knowledge of God. 
Why would God make you sufficient if you cannot give him the glory? See, that's one thing that many Christians don't know. If God is an all-sufficient God, there is nothing difficult for God to bless you. But the problem is when he blesses you, do you remember him again? Some people say, I am a self-made man. I am a self-made millionaire. Look who is talking. If he can only remember where he started from, he started as a job applicant. He wrote many CVs, he did not get it. In fact, he did not even qualify. Until God gave him an idea to start a small business. And from that small business that he was doing in his little room, with just little room there, God began to give him grace for connection. And God began to increase him. And then when God increased him five years down the line, he said, I am a self-made man. He has forgotten. He said, because they choose not to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a reprobate mind. God will not give you up. Amen. There's nothing called self-made man. It is a foolish talk. God will leave them people that say they are self-made. And it will, it, it, it will leave them alone and God will take a back seat. Okay? You are self-made. Okay? If you claim to be in control of your life, God will step back from interrupting you. Yes, he's interrupting you. You know, some of us don't need God at all. We don't. Oh, we say, what is pastor saying? Yes, because if we need God, then we will serve him. Because God cannot trust us that when I bless you, you are going to serve me. You know, some people, when God blesses them, they want to move on. They want to do some other things. No, no, no. If the blessing is from God, why will God bless you so that you can abandon him? Hello? When God can trust you that you are faithful in a little, he can entrust much into your hands. God of all sufficiency. He said in John chapter 8, verse 32, he said, You shall know the truth. And the truth shall do what? Thank God is not set you free. Hallelujah. Come on, clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. You know, some people, when you teach them something, they forget. But you have been taught, you retain. Clap for yourself again. Hallelujah. So you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Unless you know the truth, you will still be struggling with your maker. Unless you know the truth, you'll be struggling with your maker. When God knows that you want to be in control, God will take a back seat. And when God knows that you are now allowing him to take control of your life because you have now known the truth, then things begin to work well for you. God is the maker. And every time you are in control, God is not in control. And every time God is not in control, your life is at standstill. Nothing works. You need to learn to allow God to be in control. You need to learn to allow God to make you. He said, God will make you. Jesus Christ told Peter, John, Peter and Andrew, his brother, he said, follow me to Matthew chapter 4 from verse uh, 8. He said, follow me and I shall make you. God is a maker. As you spend time to know the truth, God will make you. So those are the two things that you need to be sufficient in life. All sufficient God. Someone may ask me, if you say, I shall know the truth, and the truth shall make me free. What is the truth, therefore? The truth that will make you sufficient is the truth that will make you free. And this truth is the word of God. Your sufficiency comes from the word of God. Your sufficiency comes from the word of God. And so also is it grace to abound from the word of God. In John chapter 6, verse 68 to 69, John chapter 6, verse 68 to 69, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? 
So you and I, we do not have a choice. You think you have a choice. I do not have a choice. I do not have any other option. It is God. I'm all for God. Say, and to whom, Lord, shall we go? You only have the words of eternal life. The next verse, I will believe. I will believe and know. And we have believed and know. So it's possible for you to believe at the same time know. And we have come to believe and to know that thou, you, God, are the Holy One of God. Do you believe the Word of God? Do you know the Word of God? Except you believe this Word of God and come to the knowledge of it, to know it, then you are not free. Say we have come to believe and to know until you believe and know the word of God until you find out for yourself the truth and abide in the truth you will be struggling with your maker all the things that God says you should do you will not know it until you come to terms studying the word of God finding out yourself because grace and peace multiply through knowledge in fact you also know that peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is the presence of God. Peace is the presence of the word of God inside you. He said grace and peace be multiplied to you through what? Knowledge. So the more knowledge of the Bible you have, the more peace. Do I get an amen? amen. And that's the problem. Because if you don't have time to study the word of God, you lack peace. You lack grace. You become frustrated. I've been coming to church. I've been going to church. I've been helping to do this. But nothing has worked. Well. It's because you have not come to terms with the truth. You have not sat down to study the word of God. To find out the truth yourself. But the moment you stand up and begin to search for the truth yourself. Not only will you have peace. You also have grace. Do I get an amen for you? Amen. Grace. All sufficient God. Grace will abound. In summary, therefore, God is God of all sufficiency because He's our sufficiency. God will want you to be sufficient in life if you can ask Him to make His grace abound in your life in that area. And when God makes his grace to abound because he knows he can trust you. When God makes his grace to abound towards you in that area, not only will you abound, you will have all sufficiency. Let us pray. I don't know who you are this midday. If you have been struggling with your maker, why don't you ask him to help you find the rest? I want to pray for you. If you are that man or that woman, you, you, you wonder why you have been struggling in one area. Now you know that grace until grace abounds for me in that area. I will just be a struggler, frustrated Christian. Now you know that you need grace in that area. Now you know the truth. Now you cannot be a victim to the enemy anymore. Now you need to come out because you know the truth. So if you are that woman, that man, that you know that this word of God is really talking to me. I need grace. I've been struggling in this area. Not only do you now know you need grace, also you know how the grace can abound in your life. I want to come out. If you would like God to make you to be sufficient in all things, that God to give you a heart to believe and to know the truth. There is a grace to believe and to know the truth. Please come. 
Let me pray so that God can scan into your heart and see that truly, truly, you are in need of this grace. And He can rely on you. That was the grace abound in your life. Not only will you abound, but you have all sufficient in all things. I want to pray for that struggling man, that struggling woman, that struggling child. You need grace. Say, God, give me more grace. Please come. In that area, anyone? That particular, I'm talking not to everyone, but just one particular area of your life that you know that God, except you help me, Lord, I am done for. Now I know how grace can abound through the knowledge of God. Please, I need this grace. I need this grace. I need this grace. What is that thing that is stopping you from moving on in life? You need the grace. Father, for everyone that is here, and for the man that is outside, Lord, you see the heart of everyone. Your word is true. Your word is yea and amen. Your word cannot be replaced by any other thing. You have told us that we need grace to abound. You have told us that we need grace to be sufficient. Lord, I pray for my brother here. Lord, and for other people that are shy among them that is out there, or the people watching on the TV, Lord, I pray for them. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, grant unto them the grace. Grant unto them the grace to abound. Grant unto them the grace to abound. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, for every struggling area, for every area we have been struggling with our maker, Lord, from now on, God, give us the grace to take the back seats so that you can be in control. Lord, give us the grace, oh God, to take the back seats. We will not struggle with you, oh God. Lord, give us the grace, oh God, to continue to abound in your word so that your grace can multiply in our life. Lord, thank you. In this month of grace in abundance, I pray for my brother here, oh God, for that particular area of his life, oh God, that Lord, it appears that you have been taking the back seat. Lord, I pray from now on, oh God, give him the understanding of how he can take the back seat and you can take the control seat. Amen. Lord, help him, oh God, in this month, oh God, Put on him the garment of praise. In this month, O oh God, change his robe, O oh God. Put on him the garment of praise. Lord Jesus, we need grace. Let your grace abound towards him. Lord, that in everything, in all things, him having all sufficiency, Lord, he will be able to abound to do the Lord. Let it be so for him and his family. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. And so, Father, we thank you for the rest of the crew. Thank you for the rest of the members that have heard this word. Said the entrance of the word of God give light and understanding to the simple. Lord, I pray for them. This understanding, this seed that have been planted in their heart, O oh God, let the birds of the air not be able to take it away from them. Let the enemy not be able to take it away from them. Let this word be planted in their heart. And let this word that be planted in their heart, O oh God, germinate and produce fruits unto righteousness in the name of Jesus. Lord, where we have been struggling with you, with a stony heart, Lord, take away the stony heart and give us a heart of flesh so that we will begin to do your will. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give a round of applause to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good, isn't he? Amen. How was that? How was that? Come on, clap for Jesus again. With the shortest sermon I've ever prayed. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah.